What's going on guys? So I have some big air conditioning updates for you all. You know, one of the more popular videos that I've, I've produced here in the last several months is the video on the new Furion Chill Cube, which is an inverter brushless um, variable speed air conditioning system. Basically uh, comes on some units, OEM like Brinkley's, and it is gonna be available soon as an aftermarket upgrade for folks who want to install it on their RV. A Lot of really great perks about it. And there's some things that I've recently learned that have have put my mind to ease about using this more often than I probably do. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and throw the slide out real quick so we can have a conversation about both of these air conditioning units because I've learned some things about this unit over here, which is the new Furion Chill Cube that I think are definitely pertinent to those of you who are interested in possibly upgrading to this whenever it's available, as well as the other models that will be available um, in this Cube lineup, which is definitely gonna be good information for a lot of you guys. So first of all, let's talk about this. So this unit right here is one of two that came in the RV. This is a standard 15,000 BTU Furion Chill air conditioning system. Very, very common with the rest of the industry, um, except I think it uses like dual blowers, something like that. There's some perks to this that I just can't remember right now. But again, this is a very common air conditioning system you're starting to find on a lot of RVs that are available, whether they're travel trailers and or fifth wheels. And this specific one, I have connected to the original Furion furnace or thermostat, I'm sorry, that came with this RV. Now, if you saw the original video of whenever we installed the cube, that thermostat right there used to be right there. And it controlled both the air conditioning systems simultaneously, which isn't really the greatest thing. Um, part of the problem behind that is the fact that it would pull a lot of current to run both at the same time. So they actually had the breaker turned off down here for this front unit in case I wanted to run it. The whole reason why this RV came with two air conditioning units in it given its size and the fact that they would never put two air conditioning units in this RV as an OEM unit. Basically, you can't go to a dealership lot and get this specific floor plan with two ACs in it. It's not available. But they did it because I told them I wanted to test the efficiency of running two ACs in the incredibly hot summers that we get down here in South Texas where the actual temperature can be like 114 degrees with a feel like temperature in the 125 range. So that was the reason. Um, we didn't have a chance to do much of that, but we did do some testing with both of them when it was about 100 degrees and it absolutely just froze out the inside of the RV. So that was really nice. That said, we removed this unit to install the new 18,000 BTU Furion Chill Cube. You can see this one kicking on right now. And I had manual controls that I installed on this front unit. So manually, I could turn this one on and off so I didn't have to have them both run at the same time uh, when it was you know, two similar 15,000 BTU units. After we put the cube in, I made a video talking about the fact that one thing I did not like about the cube is the fact that the fan runs all the time, even if, unless you turn it off. If you power it completely off, it will turn off. But if you have it set for automatic, and the fan and AC both in automatic mode, even when it reaches temperature, the fan will continuously run all the time. It will never shut off unless you physically power the device off at the control panel up there or via the remote. On this unit right here, the thermostat, once it reaches temperature, the unit shuts off completely. The fan motor might run a little bit, but then once it hits temperature, the compressor shuts off shortly after the fan shuts off. And as you heard or didn't hear earlier, it's completely quiet inside of here, which means it's drawing little to no power at all, just enough power essentially to run the thermostat. So that was one of the things that I liked and that was the reason why I put a standard thermostat and a standard you know, system up here versus the manual controls because I wanna keep the inside of this RV relatively cool relatively humidity free or I want to get as much humidity out as possible when we're not using it and that was the key so that's how I have this one set up right now that's why you heard it kick back on just now because it reached temperature that I have set on the thermostat and it kicks on and a viewer or commenter made a great point that I didn't even know I always thought the thermostat up here is where the temperature probe is but on these units the thermostat is actually inside of the return air even on the non chill cube model so the thermostat isn't actually in the thermostat it's inside of the unit right here 
So that's what determines when this unit kicks on and off, which actually makes me feel better about how I did this because I was a little concerned about having this right here and possibly, you know, kicking on all the time just because some of the air that's blowing out and circulates back up. But today, I just got off the phone with the engineer at Lippert who specifically works with the Furion division in Phoenix. So this isn't in Indiana, which is really good news when you're working on ACs because it might get warm in Indiana, but it doesn't get super south hot like it does down here in South Texas or in Phoenix. So their lab is actually in Phoenix. And that makes me feel better about testing ACs because it certainly does get hot in Phoenix and they know a little bit about having an AC that functions properly. So you just heard the compressor shut off on this unit and in a few seconds you're going to hear the whole thing power down. Once it powers down and it's completely, you know, stops blowing air, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this entire unit and I'll tell you what I learned about this one over here. Okay, so we've shut off completely. I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button until it shows me that we are off. Okay, so this unit is completely powered down now. It will not come back on. Now we're going to go first grab the remote here for the Furion Chill Cube. We're going to go to this unit. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. There we go. Starting to blow a good amount of air. That's what we have the remote set for right now. 67 degrees and cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set everything for automatic. So I have auto up top and then I have the fan on auto. It's set for 67, which is much cooler than I need it to be. So I'm going to raise it while I'm in here to 72. All right, so I just got off the phone like 30 minutes ago with uh, an engineer, the director of engineering from Furion, who explained to me the mentality behind this unit. So I had asked him because there were a lot of concerns I had, and they saw the videos that I've published on this where I was a little critical about the fact that there was no way to shut the unit completely down when it reached temperature automatically. What I mean by that is... To turn this entire thing off, I have to hit the power button right here, or I have to hit the power button up there. But when it's on, unlike the other AC, whenever I reach temperature, the fan motor is still going to be blowing. I'm still going to be cycling air throughout here. And my concern was the long-term dependability of that. You know, how long can that fan run nonstop before it eventually is going to fail, or before I'm going to have excessive wear and tear on the, the fan components. So. He was really interested in having a conversation with me and hearing out what my concerns were. And I spent probably about 10 minutes straight just talking to him about the few concerns I had regarding how this kind of compares against a traditional mini split. And he basically put my mind at ease in a lot of ways. I asked him, first of all, can I run this thing 24 seven without needing to shut it down? And he says, because it's a variable speed inverter brushless motor, he goes, this thing is designed to run efficiently, like nonstop. You shouldn't have any problem at all. He goes, I don't feel as if it will fail anytime soon. You can run this thing. You could keep it in your RV. You could just have the thing running at its low speed. And when it goes into kind of a power down mode, so for instance, when it hits temperature and you hear the compressor shut off, but you still feel the fan blowing a little bit of air. If you watched the previous video, I was talking to you about how you could feel just a little bit of air come out of it. He goes, the only reason they keep the fan going is because they want to properly sense the temperature of air inside of your RV. Because if the sensor's up there and the thing's not running, then you're really just sensing the outside air. So when the outside of the, the box itself starts getting hot and it, it you know radiates into your return air where the sensor is, then it's going to trigger the AC to come on, even though the inside of your RV might actually be cool. It might be cooler. So they didn't want that to happen. And by running the fan at a really low speed, it keeps air moving into the return air, and it allows it to properly sense the temperature inside of the RV itself. He says, plus the fact that this is a brushless motor and it's variable speed, it has significantly less wear components on it than a traditional AC. And the, the hard kick on power that these usually need to kick on and start running is a lot more traumatic on the components than what these use. So this by itself, the way it sits, should actually outlast this unit even though it's running 24-7. And when I say it's running 24-7, the fan 
goes to a really, really slow speed just to draw air in so the thermostat inside of it can get air from the inside of the RV and not just the air that's building up and radiating in from the outside. He also told me that when this is running in just that sense mode with the fan just barely moving, it's pulling less than 0.1 amps to a half an amp of power at the most. So it's drawing hardly any power at all. And I don't think that would be a big deal for most people who are concerned about that because anytime you're running your AC anyways, you either have to have a massive power bank for powering it or you have to be plugged into shore power. So I don't think that that's gonna be much of a concern. And as far as the life cycles of the motor, he believes that this one easily is five times the life of a brushed motor. So with that said, I'm gonna just let the thing run. I'm gonna set it for like 82 degrees, 83 degrees when I'm not in here. I know that it's gonna drop down, the fan's gonna barely be running, but it's gonna stay on 24 seven. And we're just gonna see how effective it is. We're gonna see how well this thing works inside of this incredibly hot RV during you know the summer times whenever you know it's typically putting a huge strain on the air conditioning systems that are inside of RVs. Okay, so finally, one additional update that I think a lot of people wanna know. Um, they also told me that there's gonna be three other variations of this. So they have the chill cube, they're gonna have another one of these that's ducted, they're gonna have another one that's ducted with the heat pump, and then they're gonna have another one that's an energy saving version that has a max peak amperage pull of 12 amps. So you can run it on a 15 amp circuit. And it will both be air conditioning with heat pump. So that is really cool. Those should be hitting the market in the next couple of months. Um, I don't know if all of them will hit the market together, but yeah, they're telling me that they should be available in the next upcoming months. And these are definitely huge upgrades for RVs because of what they give you in terms of efficiency, in terms of airflow, in terms of just overall lack of power usage, and hopefully longevity. That's, that's gonna be the big one. You know, will these things truly last as long as they claim, given the fact that they're using an inverter brushless variable speed motor, which has, according to them, you know, five times the life of your traditional AC blower motor. So gonna be all interesting things to find out. We're gonna have to uh, keep our eye on this thing and see how it performs. But as of now, I'm super impressed by it. And I can honestly tell you that it's game changing and revolutionary for the RV world to have this AC installed on models that it comes on now, like Brinkley units, and to be able to offer this in the aftermarket and future RVs that will be built. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.